Well, doing some uh, transmission maintenance here today. I have a new pan, gasket, and filter. I'm just reviewing some old bucks that I had from a long time ago here. It's been a long while since I did one of these. And actually, the main purpose of this here today is the transmission torque converter lockup is not working on this particular vehicle. The 1990 station wagon with the 204R. So I pulled the pan. There was like, uh, I don't know, 16 bolts or something like that. I don't remember how many exactly, but it was quite a few of them. So uh, anyway, I'm just uh, taking a look over everything. This thing shifted hard going between uh, reverse and drive. So I'm kind of inspecting to see if it's bad U-joints or if there's something inside here that's, you know, building up too much pressure. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, it looks like there's like a, I don't know. See, this is what I mean. I can't really recall. It's been so long now, but I don't know if this is a pressure switch. So anyway, there's two wires here. This is uh, the torque lockup right here. There's two bolts holding the unit in there. Um, so yeah. Oh, just pull the filter out. I don't see an O-ring on there, so I'll have to retrieve that O-ring. There it is there. So anyway, yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can get the torque lockup to work, because, I mean, this engine is a 403 engine, and um, it burns enough fuel all on its own, right? Well, without the lockup, it's kind of, you know, just burning fuel for no reason. And this transmission does have the torque lockup, so I'd like to get it working. So I ordered a new one. I have it. It's a standard motor products um, lockup solenoid. So I'm going to try and see if I can get this humming. You know, after inspecting the wires, there's really nothing wrong over here that I can see with the wiring. You know, I applied current to it. You know, sometimes you can hear a click, but I couldn't hear a click. So I tried to um, apply power with a switch get it up to highway speeds and and the transmission did nothing if it was engaged at low speeds it would lug the engine and possibly even stall it out but um you know that's not good either so i'm gonna try and see if i can change this and hope for the best here i really want this lockup to work and well if i don't get it working well then i mean at least there's fresh fluid and filter in it Everything else looks good. There is an exhaust leak with the old girl too, so that'll have to be addressed at some point. All right, so as I can see here, there's three wires. I go on to the other side of this, and this is your pigtail for your lockup. Three pins, one of them does nothing. Um, just want to take a gander inside here. Make sure that you know, the wiring is good up in here, which it doesn't seem to be a problem. So, um, yeah, so if anybody's ever experiencing torque lockup problems, you know, this is usually, well, before you divulge into what I had to do and take the pan and all that off, um, you know, this is where you want to start. This is what that's for. So here's the solenoid. Kind of a interesting looking apparatus. Here's the hardware. I never really dealt with much of these before, but according to them, they just you stick the braided ends of the wires inside this, and you thread this tight. And it's supposed, and it's supposedly supposed to lock them in place. You know, for the 200. 4R, you're supposed to use these studs and um, the ground wire we're not going to need. If you had a 700, you would ground this to the valve body inside the transmission case, but I mean, um, supposedly, from what they're saying, this is internally grounded. So, um, in any event, uh, we'll pop the old one off so we can at least get a a visual on how this is going to pan out for us here. So, um, that's all there pretty well is to that. And an interesting looking device.
Okay, so I'm gonna uh, loosen off this bracket here. See if I can uh, feed some of the wire harness through here. I have to cut it. We have to cut it right at the base of this. We could actually probably do that now. And we'll get rid of this. Okay. There's your old one. That's it. We'll eat it through this tang here for the time being so that I can do some modifying to the wire. I gotta strip it back, clean it up a bit. Wires are stripped back, a little more than a three quarters of an inch like they recommend. That's about an inch and a little bit, but I can always trim them off after. All they say with these PosiLock connectors is you insert the wire simply until it bottoms out and then you twist the connector counterclockwise until it's tight. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple if it works. And there's the other one. I think uh, my strands might be a little too long for this, but I'm gonna just, uh, I'll undo the positive just to make sure of that. This is gonna be swimming in transmission fluid anyhow, but I mean, uh, it's just vibrations and stuff like that. You don't want it to come undone because you really don't want to drop the pan again. I think I might have to for that stupid pressure switch if that's what the case may be. But anyway, that's all there is to it with that. And then for the 200 4 r I want you to use these studs. You insert these into the case and then you'll use the nuts for holding the solenoid into place. I don't see why you couldn't use your old bolts, but they supply the hardware so better use them. Okay, so just a 13 mil deep socket to tighten down the new studs. Not too hard on them. They don't need to be torqued really tight. They don't need to vibrate out either. Something like that. Good enough. So we'll go ahead and install our new solenoid. First we'll lubricate the new O-ring on the solenoid with fresh transmission fluid. Okay, install our lock-up solenoid. So there it is in all its glory, all tied in and bolted up, just tickety-boo. I want to make sure the wires aren't going to come into contact with anything. There's moving parts here that I'd be careful of. So. Is 
he going? Okay, so the pan is all cleaned up. Got the gasket laid out. I'm just gonna try and get some of these bolts started. And I'll try and get the gasket to hold the bolts so I can get a couple of them started up here. I cleaned out the pan. It's all uh, cleaned up tickety-boo. There's quite a bit of sludge in it. But, uh, you know, that's to be expected. I don't know when the last time the transmission fluid was changed. It might not have ever been changed, for all we know. It's a problem. You just don't know when you buy a vehicle with no maintenance records. Cadillac had a whole bunch of maintenance records, so I know exactly what, what had been done. So, make sure that the gasket is inserted properly and that it's going to fit and form the way it's supposed to. Okay, so I started from the tailstock mainly because the lockup solenoid is actually right at the right where the you know pump and torque converter and all this like it's right at the front. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to pinch any of my wires, otherwise this would make this project absolutely useless. And that well, the pan itself would leak, and we don't want that. I mean, you'd be sitting there wondering what the heck is going on. So, we, uh, we just want to check and make sure that no wires are pinched inside the pan, the gasket, or anything like that. We want to make sure it's tucked nicely inside the transmission case. Alright, so now that I know that my wires are good, I went ahead and pushed it up so that it's nice and flush. I can reinstall all the bolts. All right, so one way to test this, there's an old hot power lead here that was for the 307 engine. This is not a 307 engine in here, clearly. So the computer and all that is still in the car, functioning with power to it and all that. But anyway, there's this wire here that's hot when the key is in the run position. So anyway, it doesn't go anywhere anymore. So I'm utilizing that wire as my hot source, which is going to my purple wire down below which is in return going to the transmission. Right now I have the tan colored wire with a black stripe and I'm using that right now to test this unit. Uh, basically what will happen once the current is applied to it is the lockup will engage. And I mean, it's not good for it to be locking up in you know, low speeds. You'll lug the engine, you'll possibly stall it. I still haven't decided how I'm gonna route this unit yet. If I'm going to use a vacuum switch and use manifold vacuum in order to disengage it. There really should be something to disengage the transmission lockup. Otherwise, what'll happen is um, you go to stop. Your engine could stall if it dips below a certain amount of speed, lugs the engine to a point where it stalls. You lose a lot. You use a lot of vacuum. Say you have to do an emergency braking, a threshold brake. You know this will pull enough vacuum. It'll stall your engine out. Blah blah blah. You could lose control because mainly, you know, this doesn't have electric power steering. It's operated by a belt. So if the engine were to stall, you could end up getting into an accident, lose power steering, you know, and all that jazz. And if you have to swerve for something with absolutely no power steering, it'd be very stiff to steer, uh, especially if you're riding the brakes pretty hard. So I haven't decided yet on how I'm going to make this unit function. But anyway, for testing purposes to make sure that the solenoid works, I do have hot power to it right now it is grounded so like I say here's your test light uh, for example so you know pin A is the one up top on the left hand side um, you know it will be hot um, the one directly across from it is your ground there is a wire inside the transmission that goes to the fourth gear pressure switch a lot of people say you can hook them together and then once it uh, hits fourth gear, that's when your lockup will work. And that would work out great as well with the 200. Uh, certain ones don't have it. So that's where you got to use your, you know, your thinking, your thinking cap and, uh, you know, make it work another way. The Cutlass Supreme over there is a prime example of that. It's a three speed. It wouldn't have a fourth gear pressure switch. So anyhow, it uses, utilizes vacuum. So one way to test it, you know, there's current going to it now. The key is in the run position. 
If you listen carefully, there's no fluid in it, so you'll be able to hear an audible click. See? That's your lockup solenoid. That's all I'm doing. It's just releasing and applying the pigtail. It's just so that it doesn't have full line contact. So once you lose your 12 volt power, that's what makes it disengage. So right now, if I was to fill the transmission full of fluid again, start the car, put it in gear, it basically would be engaged and you know, it's that's not really good for it either, you know. So now it would be the time to either decide how you want to power this unit. Either you, uh, if you choose the vacuum operated method, you could, um, you know, use uh, vacuum uh, from your intake and make it engage around usually, you know, 35, 40 mile an hour would be ideal. Um, or you can have electronic switch. You can have an adjustable vacuum switch would even work better because, you know, Sometimes um, if it engages too soon, it'll lug the engine and it just, you know, if you have a cam in it, it'll sound like crap and, you know, it might shake the car quite violently and whatnot. So this thing is absolutely bone stock. The only reason I want it hooked up is because these 403 Oldsmobiles, they burn enough fuel just on their own accord, right? Um, <clears throat> so, and with it coupled to a 200 tranny, it's not really geared for power. It's more of a dog that just burns a little bit of oil. So, um, but anyway, fuel economy would be great. Uh, instead of, you know, racing the engine in fourth gear, you can control the RPMs with your foot. And I mean, that's no darn good either. So it'd be nice to have it lock up in fourth gear. So that's basically all there is to that. So that leaves one more wire and that usually is for your pressure switch, which I mean, you know, basically, um, now would be the time to decide how you really want to route this thing. And I still haven't decided. I have a vacuum switch in the back of the station wagon here, which is what I'm working on. So now is the time, you know, do I run to an auto parts store and just simply, you know, buy a switch that I could switch on and off on the highway? Um, or do I want to, you know, have it set up where you don't have to worry about it? Well, I'm not a man who likes putting holes in my dash for stupid switches. I just don't like that. Another thing to remember, you know, these transmissions don't take a lot of fluid, mainly because uh, if you haven't, you know, drained the torque converter and all that, they don't take a lot of fluid. So just keep that in mind. And of course they change the fluids, uh, the names and all that over the years. All right, so now with the car running, just inspect the uh, transmission pan, make sure there's no fluid leaks on both sides of it. Looks like we're good. See if we have forward gears, and reverse gears. We'll have to. Um, we'll have to probably check your fluid and add some, especially with the filter removed and all that, and with the car not sitting level. Um, it may, it may drop quite a bit. So, release the park brake. See if we have gears. Oddly enough, it's not slamming between gears anymore. That's kind of odd. I hear something ticking, like fluid pressure or something like the spring. Maybe I should inspect. Oh, it doesn't reverse. 
tires. It's kind of odd. This one shifts very nice though. I can't even feel it going into reverse anymore. Oh, I'm gonna just double check. Good. I did spill some transmission fluid. Did run down the dipstick. It must have landed on the exhaust. I see a little bit of steam there. Other than that, I think we're okay. So I'll back it off the ramps. I'm going to test the vehicle up the road, make sure that our um, that we do have all gears, and make sure the fluid is at a correct level. I can't get over how the transmission used to nudge the whole car. I can't believe how just a simple fluid change fixes stuff like that. All right. All right, so we'll clean up the tools and uh, move on. Okay, so second gear, the clutch is obviously, the solenoid is obviously engaged. Oil pressure drops. fourth gear. So as you can tell we're lugging the engine a bit. I tried the uh, second, uh, sorry, the fourth gear uh, pressure switch. I guess the switch is bad. But we can tell with the exhaust leak, you know, I just rolled up the windows. Like at 50 mile an hour it's good. But if I let off, bring the car down to a speed of about 45, let's say 40. The transmission always goes into fourth gear too early. But there's fourth, with it locked up. If you can hear the exhaust, I think it's coming from that side. I'll bring the car back down to 40 mile an hour again. Well, let's even do one better. We'll even bring it down to 30 mile an hour. lugging the engine. So with it engaged all the time, that's no good. 